were you in? Were you into glitter? I mean, no. platform shoes. And no, no. Didn't go that. No, I was more like a heavy metal kid. Mm -hmm. You know, I I was more of a heavy metal kid who would go check out uh, glam rock because mm -hmm. I liked the dolls and I liked Iggy. Mm -hmm. But I thought the glam rock thing was pretty stupid. I thought people looked pretty ridiculous dressed up like that. When did the word punk first become uh, in common usage? Uh, I read it in Cream a lot. I read Cream magazine a lot, and Lester Bangs used to use the word a lot in describing Iggy and Alice Cooper and the Dolls. What what was these feelings like then? Dead. There's nothing happening here. It was a dying place. The junkies had taken over. Uh, St. Mark's place was uh, deserted. One night I was uh, hanging out with some people above the bar in that place it's now sounds mm -hmm. and they were telling me about how the building had just been condemned and they were going to tear it down in six months and the whole talk was then how the whole neighborhood was going to get torn down mm -hmm. and nothing was going to happen to it what year was it 72 72 73 74 mm -hmm. were you guys going to cbgb from the from yeah we'd walk the over the band started i um i started going there in the summer of 75 during the summer fest mm -hmm. And when I saw the Ramones, I became convinced that something was really happening here. And the dolls had broken up. Um, Max has turned into a disco. Um, there were no rock clubs left. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, I had not been at the Mercer Arts Center, but it seemed like it there was always, yeah, yeah, there was always, like, bars around, and they were all closing. Mm -hmm. And everything was kind of getting down to this place. Mm -hmm. But something interesting was happening. And to the dictators, too. Mm -hmm. You know, although they'd broken up, um, they were hanging out there. Picked up, we got, I got a distribution deal together with the High Times, and they were pouring money into us, and getting us printed, and extending us credit, and, uh, you know, taking care of us. They were going to start a distribution company, and, uh, they were being distributed in turn by Larry Flint. Mm -hmm. Now, Flint was making a lot of enemies as were we, as were high times, and uh, within a month, mysteriously, within a month after we signed with high times, or two or three months really, I guess, uh, Larry Flint was shot in Atlanta, mm -hmm. where mysteriously the President of the United States had come out of there, Atlanta, Georgia, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, Flint's magazine empire was thrown into chaos, mm -hmm. and financial chaos mostly they stopped paying their uh paying high times so mm -hmm. high times couldn't pay us anymore mm -hmm. for tom Fassad was the guy at high times who liked us right and he was like telling her you know he knew he had the vision to know that punk was going to make it big right you know so he wanted to keep us going but everybody else at high times hated us uh we did it we went on tour with the sex pistols and we brought eat much the beach party Fumetti issue there, which a lot of people like now. It's a time it died, though, on the newsstand. You know, I was just in the office one day, and we were playing poker with some guy who was trying to sell us office supplies, and I said, well, you know, we're going to go out of business. We're going to go bankrupt, you know. This guy's dead. Nobody wants us anymore. Uh, we got to call it quits. And he says, no, no, no. I'm going to take care of everything. So this guy, Spacely, takes over. And we managed to wrestle up a printer. He smoothed things out with our distributor. And uh, we put we put out two more issues, and we had a third one on press. Um, half our writers by this time had become disgusted because we didn't make it big overnight. We never did. We're very good at paying people. Uh, at this time, also, you know, finally, Punk was dead. The Sex Pistols had broken up. Sid mm -hmm. Vicious killed his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. um, the Punk thing was no longer happening. Mm -hmm. You know, Punk was dead. Uh, everybody's telling us we should change our name if we no want to way, keep going. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Sire Records, who signs the Ramones and the Talking Heads, and uh, I'm trying to think of who else. But they signed everybody from right. CBGB. They put out. They started a campaign. Don't call it punk. Right. And they put it on every fucking press release, every press kit, every advertisement. Don't call it punk. You know, the Clash brought out their second uh, album. And uh, the record company says, you know, you can't put out a song called All the Young Punks. You know, call it mm -hmm. something else, you know. So they had to change the name. They couldn't say punk on, on the record cover. Mm -hmm. 
You know, it's like the amount of anti-punk sentiment was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. There was a rumor at the time that uh, Carter said on the uh, White House lawn during a jazz festival, stop this punk thing, you know, mm -hmm. which is really understandable when you understand that the guy was elected thanks to uh, Capricorn Records money. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. th that's what made him was Southern Rock. Mm -hmm. So it's natural he'd want to shut us down, you know. Mm -hmm. We were about to sign a deal with Flint. We were we were going to get a fifty thousand dollar advance and mm -hmm. you know money up the yin yang mm -hmm. and finally stop you know li sleeping in the office and and starving and shit. Mm -hmm. When he when he got shot, which I always thought was kind of mysterious that he got shot uh, just when he started to make a move in the publishing business. But but this whole mistake about see Steven you know Andy Malcolm Brewer. McLaren was in New York in the summer of seventy five. Right. Okay, you know the whole story? Like he, he wanted to he, go he back was, and start a punk rock group? The, 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 dolls. the dolls, yeah. And he wanted to start the Sex Pistols then, and he wanted to bring Richard Hell to uh, London to front the group. Mm -hmm. And uh, Richard declined. He wanted to start the Heartbreakers with Johnny Thunders. Mm -hmm. And so Malcolm found uh, Johnny Rotten. And it seems like it was basically something, started something to sell clothes. Mm -hmm. He had a shop sex, and they'd always wear clothes from his fashion shop mm -hmm. but it wasn't just members of the pr it wasn't really the press I think it was just more like uh, whenever something happens in the United States like that they always jump on it over there mm -hmm. and they they want to do it ten mm -hmm. times more but they never actually heard the music until the Ramones came in 76 they heard the doll but or they seen 80 you know they uh, they got the record the Ramones, you know, Joey has always maintained that uh, when he met all the guys in the bands, everybody who started the punk band, they all came up to him and said, oh, you're our biggest influence and all this shit. I mean, when I heard that the early Pistols did uh, songs like The Monkey's Stepping Stone, mm -hmm. I knew what they were up to, you know? I mean... Mm -hmm. Well, uh, didn't um, uh, television open all their sets at the 13th floor elevator? Uh, yeah, Tom Berlain was, was the first person to tell me about the Sonics. You don't, you don't follow any particular groups? The Ramones. They're still my friends. I stay in touch with them. I watch MTV. I think Twisted Sister sounds a lot more like the Dictators and the Ramones mm -hmm. of the late 70s than the hardcore bands do. But, uh, when uh, when the Mud Club opened? We were the first ones to have a party there. Right. Oh, you Punk, know that. Punk Awards night. Yeah, we had a big party there. That, that was the second Punk Awards night, though, right? There had been a... No, we'd had an awards ceremony. It was year. a big disaster. No, that was the only one. 78. It was more like our funeral. I was planning our funeral because I knew we were going out of business. I wanted to go out with a bang. Mm -hmm. So, uh... I think I took the money that I got paid for the Road to Ruin album cover and spent that on the, uh, party. Mm -hmm. Um, it was like the first time you could like dance to rock and roll in, a, in a, like a club that seemed devoted to it. Mm -hmm. You know, Anya Phillips, who was really, Anya was, you know, a real uh, important person in the scene in, in those days. Uh, I had heard that she was going to start a club called the Molotov Cocktail. Mm -hmm. That was the original name of the Mud Club. Mm -hmm. And she had known Steve. Uh, she was his dominatrix. Was that the deal? <laughs> Yeah. Well, her and Sylvia, who's married to Lou Reed, were very good friends. Mm -hmm. In fact, that's how Lou met Sylvia at some uh, Ulan Spiegel Society. Well, she's just very intelligent, very uh, like a no bullshit person. She wouldn't take bullshit from anybody. Mm -hmm. um, real smart, real smart. Knew what she wanted, knew how to get it. I don't know. I liked her. Mm -hmm. Was she one of the first people at, at, at the club to sort of take on the uh, the uh, what, the S and M paraphernalia as a um, little leather regalia and studs and uh, was there that, was a lot was of leftover there was a lot of leftover glam rock and uh, the whole fashion thing was always happening so. Um, I know when we did Nick Detroit, she couldn't wait to be a Nazi dyke. You know, she really got into that. Mm -hmm. But like every girl at CBGB's wanted to. You know, most of the musician girl, mu musician's girlfriends at the time were strippers because they were the only girls who could afford to keep them in dope. Mm -hmm. you know? A lot of heroin around the club scene all the time. Yeah, at CBGB's. 
I didn't realize it at the time. But of course, since I, I it was pretty obvious that I don't do it. People who did it just stayed away. You ever seen the Heartbreakers? They were, you know, too much junky business and Chinese rocks. You know, mm -hmm. they're all anthems to doing heroin. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's kind of like why I didn't like to write about the Heartbreakers. They were a very popular group, but I didn't like promoting uh, drug use. Mm -hmm. you know? Thing, I talked. I mean, I talked to my goddamn sister about this. You know, mm -hmm. my older sister says, "Oh, I thought that punk rock started in London." You know, right? And I'm like, Ooh! you know. She should know me better than that. But at the same time, it was happening in Australia. And that's how far flung it was. We'd have a little story about when Legs was on a subway train and threw up. Mm -hmm. And so these punks, punks would get in their leather jackets and walk down the street and throw up. Mm -hmm. You know? It was like crazy, the things we'd hear, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, Richard Hell would have a, have a safety pin, so they'd put safety pins all up and down. There you see pictures of them, you know, up, up and down their coats, right. in their nose, all over their face. We were doing... All kinds of exciting stuff here in New York. And all we had is the Village Voice. So when they wrote about us, they wrote a big article about punk rock. And they superimposed uh, the scene at the Anvil. So one scene, they're, they're talk one paragraph, they're talking about Legs McNeil of CBGB's in a leather jacket. Mm -hmm. And the next paragraph, they're describing men pissing into each other's mouths. Yeah, mega money. And John Michel Basquiat, who came out of the Mud Club, man. I remember him. I talked to him the day before the PS1 show. And he told me he was going to make it real big, that he, like, worked really hard in the show, and he met all these, these important people. Mm -hmm. And he's done. Mark Miller told me that originally the punk art show was just going to be uh, you and Marsha Resnick's photographs. And, and when, word, stuff, right? when word got around town that they were going to have a punk art show, every artist in, in Lower East Side was calling up and wanted to be in the show. What, what, what was the opening like? It's terrible. Uh... These, did you hear about the three idiots who showed up? Three hippie types showed up, and they were like, I guess they thought they were acting like punks, but they had like long hair, one of them had a beard, and he had a snake going through his nose, you know, one of those rubber snakes. Mm -hmm. He stuck one end in here and the other in there. And uh, they were all dressed up in like glitter and silver paint, and they, they started like dancing and singing in the middle of the gallery of all this, you know? Well, who arranged that? Nobody. They were just like hanging out. Mm -hmm. And Alice Denny, who you know, put together the show, started yelling at them, and they were just, I don't know, acting really stupid. Mm -hmm. The whole thing was really stupid. A lot of people showed up, but, uh, I don't know, they, they they try to do too much, I guess. They they had bands all night, um, you know, Legs McNeil's group Shrapnel played in some local Washington band, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Lou Reed's pretty important in it, I guess, Yeah. right? Lou Reed and Andy Warhol getting together is the beginning of something. Getting together? Well, when they met, at a, and he, he, Andy Warhol decided that art was, uh, and music could get together and mutually benefit each other. Yeah. Rock and art had never even been in the same room together until that happened. Mm -hmm. As anybody of the fun used to have great parties. Mm. Really the best. Patty could always throw a good party. I was going to say, she, she could, yeah. But, um, it's none, none she might have learned how. I think she might have learned how. Like, Anya learned how, you know. Throwing a party is something you're really going to learn how to do.